everybody, I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Glory be to God for giving us another day in which we can contemplate His Holy Word and learn to walk in His ways. Hallelujah. A sister wrote to me yesterday, and she asked a question, and she said, Do you have a video? about this and actually I don't and it's an excellent idea for a video so here I am to make a video in answer to her question. So to paraphrase her question it was basically that she had testified unto family member that we are saved by baptism which is the truth of God's Word and this family member had said no all you have to do is believe and had uh, used John chapter 3 and verse 16 to, to establish that. Um, and the sister who wrote to me said she realized that if she continued to contend, it was not going to profit. And then she related to me that she found this so frustrating that it was painful. And did I have any videos that address this problem? So here I am to talk about this. And you know, as Christian women, we need to keep our heart. And a woman is more vulnerable in her heart than a man is. And when we're speaking the gospel unto people and when they reject it, it does hurt our heart. And we want very badly for people dear unto us to be saved. And so in order to keep our heart as a Christian woman, when speaking the truth of God's word unto people, we need to remember a few things from God's holy word. So the first thing is we recognize that the word of God is the seed by which people are born again. And I'm going to go over this briefly. Let's go first to Luke chapter 11, Luke cha I mean Luke chapter 8 and verse 11. And here we can see clearly that the word of God is the seed. Jesus said, now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. And may we be blessed as we consider God's word today. The seed is the word of God. Jesus said in John chapter 3 and verse 3, that unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So let's go to 1 Peter. Pardon me for that noise. I have a little bit of issue with my software. But at any rate, um, in 1 Peter chapter 1, and let's read here um, in verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible, of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So the seed is the word of God. And people who are not born again can't understand it. And while they might be religious and look at the scripture to try to find their way, they're blind, they can't see the kingdom. And so they're trying to find a way to enter the kingdom when they can't see the kingdom. When we're testifying unto family members or friends, people who are dear to us, we need to bear in mind that someone who is not born again will not hear the word of God, and we can't make them be born again. And the sister was aware of this. She realized that there was no point in continuing to try to convince this family member. And it is troublesome to our heart because we love people and we don't want them to perish in their sins. So what do we do then? How do we attend to our heart? Well, we, we want to realize a few things about being a Christian and preaching the gospel to people. We have to remember that it's not our word. It's God's word. And we also want to bear in mind that we had a life before we were born again and could hear the word of God. And God was long-suffering and patient with us until we were ready to receive the word of God. One thing I would say about 
a woman's ministry. So when we're speaking to family members about the truth of salvation, that just because we are born again doesn't mean that they are. And just because we, at this moment, can understand God's word, it doesn't mean that they can. But it doesn't mean that our sowing of that seed is without merit. And we want to understand what God says about this. So let's go to Isaiah. Excuse me. Isaiah and chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. Let's start in verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth, and bud that it may give seed, to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So it's God's word, and it will not return void. It will either bring forth life in the person who heard it, or it will make them angry and reject the word of God. And we who are bearing this seed need to remember that just because someone is angry about the word of God today does not mean that it will not bring forth light life tomorrow. And I want to discuss in just a bit how we as Christians can help that to come to pass. And we don't make it come to pass, but we can help it come to pass. So let's read a little bit further here in verse 12. For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace, and the mountains and hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. So when we are faithful in bearing the precious seed, the word of God, the gospel of salvation as, as it is now in our time in, in the blood of Jesus Christ by being baptized in his name, that we can rejoice in that even when people don't receive it. So we want to keep that in mind that it's God's word, it's not our word, it's God's word that they're rejecting and not us. And furthermore, just because they're rejecting it today doesn't mean that they will always reject it. Just as we might have not understood for many years before we came to be given the love of the truth by God, we have to remember also that this is a gift from God. The fact that we can hear the word of God and obey it is indeed a gift. The word of God says that ear hearing ear the Lord hath made. You see? So if we can hear the word of God, it's not because we're better than anyone. It's often because our heart was broken. And sometimes when we're speaking to family members, that hasn't happened to them yet. They haven't come to the end of their own ideas. They aren't searching for the truth, as many of us who are born again were. So we had come to the place where we were done with false religion. And we just wanted the truth in most cases. So God gives the increase, not us. It's his word, not ours. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 6. I have planted... Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So we might plant a seed and never see the person again that we planted the seed in their heart. That doesn't mean it won't bring forth life. And we need to trust God that his word will do the purpose 
wherein he sent it to accomplish. So it's his word, it's his purpose, and not everyone is going to be able to hear the word of God. And verily, we can't guarantee that people that we're fond of are going to make it into the kingdom. And I realize that this is hard on a, a woman's heart, and I want to address this a little bit. Because we who are Christians, we know that it's a narrow way that we walk. And then we have to be willing to give up everything. If we go to Matthew chapter 10, let's read starting in verse 34. Think not that I'm come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. And what is the sword? Well, the word of God is the sword of the spirit. We read this. I'll put that verse in the script description box below. But the word of God divides. It doesn't make everybody happy. And Christians don't agree to disagree. We tell the truth even when it's not popular. We have to be prepared that people that we're fond of are going to reject it. So let's read on. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. So the cross that we bear as Christians is that we lay down all for the kingdom, just as Jesus Christ did. He laid down his life at the cross for the kingdom, for the people who would come to believe on his name and obey his gospel. So Jesus Christ redeemed those who would obey his gospel. And the cross is not a pretty piece of jewelry. The cross is when things in our flesh hurt because of the kingdom of God. So when we've testified of the truth about salvation unto a family member and they've rejected it or they've rejected us or even sometimes they might betray us unto death, that that hurts our heart. And as Christian women, we have to remember that Jesus Christ, who went before us, understands our pain, and we can cry out to him. And there's two things about crying out to Jesus that we want to understand. Let's go now to Psalm 142. And there are many comforts in the Psalms. Starting in verse 1, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and with my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before him, and I showed before him my trouble. So when our heart hurts because of this kind of thing or other things, the first thing we do is we go to the Lord and we ask him, we supplicate him to have his hand be upon the situation that we are not able to change, for it is his word. It's not our word, it's his. So we can go before the Father and ask him to have his hand upon the life of the person who right now is unable to hear the truth. And they're just not born again yet, and we don't make people born again. Only God does that. So we bring that supplication before the Lord, and then we pour out our complaint before him and show him our trouble. So, you know, a lot of people think that they always have to have perfect faith and they always have to be rejoicing. But the truth is that when we are Christians, there are many times in which we are suffering for the kingdom. And Jesus Christ knows that because he was a man of sorrows. And so we bring that before him. We show before him our trouble. Verse 3, When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. So we get overwhelmed. It's okay to feel overwhelmed. 
And when we cry out to the Lord, then he knows us. He knows that we love him and that we want to walk in his ways. Then thou knewest my path in the way wherein I walked. Have they privily laid a snare for me? And the thing is, they have laid a snare, whether or not they're aware of it. Because when our family members reject the word of God and our heart is hurt, that alone can cause us to stumble. So we want to remember that even when people deliberately oppose us, they do so because they're blind. And I would say this is like, you know, if you had a family member who had been admitted to the hospital uh, with a, a severe infection and a very high fever, and they were ranting and raving because of the, the fever, would we take to heart the things that they said, even if they accused us of horrible things, maybe of poisoning them or, or trying to kill them? Would, would, would we be offended at that? No, we would, we would pray for them, that the Lord heal them in Jesus' name. And the same thing is true when someone in, in the sickness of their sin rejects the word of God and reviles or persecutes us. They're sick from sin, and they, they really don't know what they're doing, even though they might be aware, they might be conscious in their mind what they're doing. They're not aware of what they're doing. Because what they're doing, if they keep at it, is, is sealing their fate in hell, and they need to repent. And we can't force people by arguing with them, of course, to repent, but we can pray for them. And when we pray for them, we know that God hears so I want to, and I do advise you go back and read the rest of Psalm 142 because it's very beautiful and it will comfort you. But I want to go now to Psalm 145 and in particular verses 18 and 19. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. So when we know who God is, and we know who his son is, and we've been redeemed by being baptized in Jesus' name. We call upon God in truth. Someone who thinks that God is something other than the one true God, the Holy Spirit, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, that, that God is not, he is not nigh unto them. He might draw them to himself. He might see that they're, they're mistaken, that they've been falsely taught, that, that they're out of the way, and he might draw them unto him, but he is not nigh unto them. He is nigh unto them who call upon him in truth. Verse 19, he will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them When these things happen, it is very difficult. It's very frustrating. It can cause us to be just frustrated and upset. And we can't overcome that or anything else on our own power. We have to turn to the Lord and get the strength from Jesus Christ when we cry out to him. Let's go to Psalm 126. Psalm 126. And let's read here, starting in verse 5. They that sow, so what are we sowing? We're sowing the word. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless, doubtless, this is the word of the Lord, doubtless, come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. And sheaves, of course, is the harvest. We can't determine who is going to hear and believe and obey the word of God. And we don't know at what time that might occur. When we have done what God commands, bringing the precious seed in tears sometimes when people don't want to hear it, and we pray that the Father do according to his will with that seed, that oftentimes 
God can do what the power of a woman or a man cannot and cause that person's heart to be prepared so that that seed that we brought to them will break open and bring forth life. When we do these things, then we trust in the Lord. We leave these matters to him. We turn our mind away from someone who's rejected the word of God and turn our attention to the Lord first. And then we turn our attention to bearing the precious seed to someone else who might be able to hear knowing that as we do this, God is in his heaven and he's looking upon you, my sister who asked, and any of us who do this, with love. And our heavenly father loves us. When we do these things, when we suffer for his name, he loves us. So I pray that this message has brought comfort to you, the sister who asked, and to anyone else who has also experienced this frustration and the pain and anguish of beloved family members or friends rejecting God's word. May the word of the Lord go forth today and bring comfort unto many today in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And may God our Father get all the glory forever. Amen.